70 years ago, a law school student saw his dreams of road racing turn to reality. The tough twisting turns tested man and machine on a paved and dirt course running throughout the small village of Watkins Glen. Nine years later, drivers made history when they took to a new gleaming permanent road course. The biggest stars in racing thrill thousands year after year. And now, drivers are set to buckle up and seek glory as engines roar through the hills like thunder at the Glen. WENY presents the Williams Toyota of Elmira Thunder at the Glen. Brought to you in part by Dandy Mini Mart, Lake Country Motorsports, Visions Federal Credit Union, Boyer RV Center, Horse Heads Pick Apart, and Pearson Seamless Gutters. Now, let's go live to Watkins Glen International Speedway. Watkins Glen International in Watkins Glen, New York. We want to thank you for joining us this evening from all across the Twin Tiers. And a special thank you to our viewers from Erie, Pennsylvania. I'm Renata Steele. And I'm Kruppen Haas. Over the course of the next hour, we'll be getting you ready for the NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series. Go bowling at the Glen race here at WGI. We're going to have all sorts of great stuff. We're going to hear from the drivers. Take a look at the standings ahead of Sunday's race. And also take a look inside the fan experience from camping here at the Glen to hitting the bowling lanes all here at WGI. That's right. We've got a lot to cover this hour. We're going to be giving you a close-up look at the one-of-a-kind handmade trophy the winner of the gold bowling at the Glen will receive. Again, like you said, taking a look back at the history of racing here at the Glen. But let's get right to it. Griffin, the Zippo 200 ending just a short bit ago, and Joey Logano walking away with the win. Absolutely, and the race was interesting, Renata, from start to finish. During the race, drivers had to deal with the rain at times as they battled for position. Then at the end, Logano and his Penske teammate, Brad Keselowski, dueled it out for the top spot in the closing laps before Keselowski ended up spinning after driving it too hard into the first turn. For Logano, he believes running in the Xfinity Series will help him for the cup race on Sunday. I think every time you come to Watkins Glen, if you can make more laps, it's better. Um, that's why you see a lot of uh, cup guys in this field. You see a lot of cup guys in the K&N uh, Pro Sur Series uh, race yesterday here. Um, drivers just trying to get laps. We don't do this stuff very often, and uh, it's tough to be able to um, get in that flow. And uh, this is a lot of fun. I mean, why not run it? It's a lot of fun. Now this win is Logano's third in the Xfinity Series at WGI, and his fifth win in the Xfinity Series. Well, the other big highlight of the day: the Monster Energy Cup Series drivers hit the track for their first and final practices. There were two practice sessions for drivers to participate in as they get ready for the goal bowling at the Glen race tomorrow at 2.30 on NBC. Eric Jones of Joe Gibbs Racing at the fastest practice lap, posting a time of 70.46 seconds. Hedrick Motorsports driver Chase Elliott had the second fastest lap time, making it around the track in 70.84 seconds. Now for a look at how qualifying is going, let's send it down to John Serio, who's standing by with a look at, at some of the drivers' times so far tonight. John? Thanks, Griffin and Renata. Well, we're down here by Pitt Road, qualifying just getting underway. But before we talk about that, we have one port important piece of information we should discuss. Now, it was announced on Wednesday that there's some changes to the policies that NASCAR is going to do following qualifying. Cars will be impounded as usual, but instead of them holding on to the cars and doing that on Saturday night, they're going to be inspecting the vehicles Sunday morning. Now, what does that mean to you? How does that change anything? Well, that means we won't have the official qualifying times until two hours before the race on Sunday morning. So now with qualifying underway, this first heat should last approximately 25 minutes. The best 12 times from this first heat will advance to the second round. In the second round of qualifying, it's the best times they go on to be at the front of the lineup at the goal bowling at the Glen 200 tomorrow morning at 2.30. Back to you guys. One minute remaining. for Sunday. The grandstands will be opening at 11 a.m. and they will remain open until one hour after track activity. Now driver introductions, they'll start at 1.50 in the afternoon, all leading up to the go bowling at the Glen race at 2.30 p.m. 
being broadcast on NBC. Now let's take a look back at last year's NASCAR Series Cup race at Watkins Glen. It was the I Love New York 355, and things came down to the wire. Martin Truex Jr. came out on top for Barney Visser Racing. He edged out Matt Kenseth by just .41 seconds. It was a big day for Joe Gibbs Racing as they had the, the Kenseth finish second, Daniel Suarez finished third, Denny Hamlin right behind him coming in fourth, and then Kyle Busch crossed the finish line in seventh. And now, Griffin, the weather can play a big part in how NASCAR teams prepare for the race. We saw it Saturday afternoon with the Zippo 200. It rained for a little bit. It really has an impact on how the drivers prepare, but also how the fans can enjoy their day. Absolutely. So let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Joe Veris for your race day forecast. Joe? Starting right now, weather cooperating across the Twin Tiers and right here at WGI, like you mentioned earlier, around 4 o'clock this afternoon, right during the uh, Zippo 200, had that downpour come through, but didn't really last for very long, and we have great news here as we move forward and go through the rest of the weekend. Now let's take a look at uh, current conditions uh, right now at WGI. A very summer-like. Uh, we're looking at temperatures, lower 80s, very high humidity in place. Uh, we have an easterly breeze at about 9 miles an hour. Our forecast looking pretty good for tonight. No weather issues. Uh, obviously qualifying going on right now. Uh, we'll keep it mainly clear. Eventually through the overnight period, a little bit of fog will form. Uh, temperatures bottoming out in the lower 60s. A light breeze out of the southwest. But the big race for tomorrow, go bowling at the Glen. Getting underway uh, early afternoon for tomorrow. Looking very nice here at WGI. Forecasting plenty of sunshine for our Sunday. Temperatures actually topping out in the upper 80s and lower 90s. That doesn't even factor in the humidity. So uh, definitely a bit of a factor tomorrow. At least it's going to be dry, but it's going to be a hot one, not only uh, here at WGI, but across the rest of the twin tiers as well. Much more weather coming up uh, from right above pit lane coming up in just a few minutes, guys. All right, well, thank you, Joe. Well, before the goal bowling at the Glen on Sunday, we want to look back last weekend. The Monster Energy Cup yeah. Series was at Pocono Raceway for the Gander Outdoors 400. And Griffin, it was a pretty eventful race. Absolutely, that's right, Renata. Despite starting from the back of the pack due to failing post-qualifying inspection, Kyle Busch was able to come out on top at Pocono. Daniel Suarez, Alex Bowman, Kevin Harvick, and Eric Jones rounded out the top five. Another notable from Pocono, Richard Petty motorsports driver Bubba Wallace Jr. had a scary crash. He lost his brakes heading into turn one. He tried to slow himself down using the grass in the infield and then collided sideways with the wall. Fortunately, he was uninjured in the crash. All right, well, let's take a look at the Cup Series standings heading into tomorrow's race. Kyle Busch is currently on top with 891 points. Kevin Harvick right behind him in second with 843 points. Martin Truex Jr. coming in third with 762. Now, those three drivers, they're being called the big three. They've been called that all season. They have a combined 16 wins of the 21 points races just so far this season. Joey Logano and Clint Boyer rounding out the top five. And right behind those drivers, we have Kurt Busch in sixth. He's actually tied with Boyer with 677 points, but he does not have a win yet this season, while Boyer has two. Brad Keselowski, Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, and Ryan Blaney finish out the top ten. All right, and racing isn't the only sport being celebrated here this weekend, if you can believe it. Bowling is also making an appearance, thanks to GoBowling.com, the race sponsor. Now, there are actually regulation size bowling lanes set up right here at WGI, and that's where we're going to find our Dan Schrack, and he's going to go head-to-head -head with a PBA pro. Dan? That's right, guys. We're switching now from the fast lanes to, well, the bowling lanes. As you said, GoBowling.com is the official sponsor of tomorrow afternoon's big race here at Watkins Glen International, and it is a big race. I'm joined right now by 2018 PBA Tour Finals winner Jason Belmonte. Jason, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Tell us, what has this experience with NASCAR been like for you so far? Yeah, it's been honestly bloody amazing. Um, there aren't too many times that I've, you know, tried to bowl a ball with, uh, you know, a sports car flying around uh, at the track behind me. So getting used to the sounds um, is certainly a challenge, but it's a lot of fun. The people here have been so amazing. It, this is my very first NASCAR race, so I'm just really excited. Can you tell? 
I, I can, and it is a terrific fan experience for players to, or for anyone to come down here and uh, and pick up a ball and go bowling. Now you have four Player of the Year awards and 18 PBA titles. I mean, you're you're highly decorated. Not many people can do what you do. Talk to me a little bit about the Belmo style, your style. Yeah, so I bowl a little bit differently to most. Uh, I use a two-handed technique, and it all started because I was 18 months old when I first rolled a ball. The ball was too heavy for me to use a traditional style, so I developed this two-handed technique. As time was going on, I realized I was getting pretty good at it, and I didn't want to stop, so I just kept on going, and honestly, the rest is history. Well, let's see it. Can we go head-to-head -head here? All right. And that is how it's done, good <laughs> sir. That is how it is done. Good stuff there. Jason, thank you so much for coming out here today. We really appreciate it. Fans do have a chance to win $10,000 tomorrow afternoon if Go Bowling driver Eric Amarola crosses into victory lane. For more information on how to enter that contest, head over to GoBowling.com. For now, live at Watkins Glen International, Dan Schrack, Thunder at the Glen. All right, thank you so much, Dan. And we need to take a quick break, but when we come back, the president of Watkins Glen International joins us live on set. That's right, we'll talk to Michael Printup about this year's Go Bowling at the Glen Race and what it's like to manage one of the most popular racetracks in the country. Stay with us. Live from the home of the Go Bowling at the Glen, you're watching the Williams Toyota of Elmira Thunder at the Glen. Live from Watkins Glen International, we now return to the Williams Toyota of Elmira, Thunder at the Glen. And welcome back to Thunder at the Glen. We are joined by Watkins Glen International President Michael Pernup. Now, it is hard to believe that the weekend is here. We've got the cup drivers on the track qualifying right now. How does it make you feel that we're back here this, this next go round? Where'd the year go? <laughs> I mean, it, it, it went so fast, and it's so fun to have these cup guys back on the track and get qualifying in tonight. Look at the beautiful sunny skies. I mean, we're ready to go tomorrow. Just got to get this qualifying done and see who's going to be on that pole tomorrow. Absolutely. And that leads me to my next question. Uh, just being here for this weekend, just the other day, Watkins Glen International being named the USA Today 10 Best Reader's Choice, best NASCAR track in the country, third year in a row. How does that make you feel? I get chills. <laughs> uh, it's it's absolutely awesome. Our fans, our media, our partners, uh, you know, they made us number one. You know, we get to vote, but the fans did it, so this is pretty awesome. Now, earlier in the week, I talked with uh, Director of Public Relations here at WGI, Chris Baker, about all the preparations that go into this race. He said that on Monday after the race, you guys will already be talking about what you're going to do next year. Talk about all the time that goes into this and everything that goes into preparing for such a huge event. It does, and I have to tell you, Chris is a little wrong. I have to call him out. We actually started about next year in May already. Okay, so oh, yeah, he's way ahead of that curve. But I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, I mean, Monday morning, Tuesday morning, we do a recap meeting, and then we get right back into it and start planning for next year. It takes a year to put together a party for 164,000 people combined over these five days. Now, we've been talking to a lot of people over the past couple of days, some of them coming from... Uh, Florida to come to this race. You've got millions of more people watching it on TV every year. For people who have never been to this track to see this race that are avid NASCAR fans, what would you say, why should they come here to experience a race in person? Well, we were voted number one three times for a reason. So, but you know what, it's, it's our area. The lakes, the gorges, the southern tier, the parks, uh, the wineries. I mean, you know, Brad Keselowski, Clint Boyer, and about 20 other drivers they came in Wednesday. You know, they were, Clint Boyer was at the Shimon County Fair the other day. Wow. You know, uh, uh, Brad Kaslowski was walking the gorge, you know. So everybody loves this area like we do, and we live here, so we get to enjoy it all the time. Now, a lot of the talk this weekend is focused on 
the big three drivers, Harvick, Martin Truex Jr., and Kyle Busch. But would you kind of like to see some, some other people get involved down the stretch of this race? Well, while I love those guys and have a great relationship with them, yes. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I'm rooting for Danny Suarez, Bubba Wallace, nothing against the other 40 drivers, but, you know, those guys are awesome. They're this close to getting in that big mm -hmm. winner's circle right behind us. All right, just one quick thing I want to add because Joey Logano, he just won the Zippo 200, and the last time he did that year at WGI, he swept the weekend. Yeah, I gave him a broom. <laughs> uh, uh, in victory lane on Sunday, I actually grabbed a broom and gave it to him because he swept. You know, Joey's a great driver, um, obviously, but, uh, you know, I, he, he's hot this weekend, but I wouldn't put Brad Keselowski behind that either, so. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Michael. Mr. Pramp, thank you so much for, for joining us. And we have to take a quick break. Live from Watkins Glen International, we now return to the Williams Toyota of Elmira, Thunder at the Glen. Live from Watkins Glen International, we now return to the Williams Toyota of Elmira, Thunder at the Glen. Now, earlier today, I asked several of the top drivers on the Cup Series about what makes WGI special. Now, Kyle Busch, Martin Truex Jr., and Daniel Suarez all had one thing on their mind, speed. What makes this road course unique is just how fast it is. It's a very fast road course. Uh, there's a lot of speed here. Um, there's a lot of technical areas. There's a lot of time to be gained through those technical areas, but also um, with the amount of speed that you carry here, um, any dip in that speed is a big time loss. For me here, just the speed, this is a speedway of road courses in my opinion, just because of the, the speed you carry around here. And it's, uh, it's, it can be quite treacherous, especially since the repave with, you know, fairly hard tires on these cars and a lot of horsepower. So it's, um, it's quite a handful and it's pretty exciting. Well, I think what is unique is, you know, how fast the racetrack is for a road course. I feel like um, we're going very fast through the S's, getting to the bus stop. We're going very, very fast there. <laughs> I, I have always a smile on my face uh, coming into the Glen. So uh, looking forward for this weekend. I feel like it's going to be a lot of fun. When we come back, we're going to hear from some of the fans here for the goal bowling at the Glen race on Sunday. Many of them, they've already been here for days now, and you will not believe how far some of them have traveled to watch NASCAR at WGI. Stay with us. Live from the home of the goal bowling at the Glen, you're watching the Williams Toyota of Elmira Thunder at the Glen. Live from Watkins Glen International, we now return to the Williams Toyota of Elmira, Thunder at the Glen. And welcome back again, Ned Griffin, with all the action happening here at the track. Sometimes you can forget about all the camping that's going on here at the Glen from where we're sitting. You can see just all of these campers, camp ground set up people enjoying themselves. Absolutely, and Ashley Gaffaro talked with people who traveled as far as Florida to come here this weekend, and she spoke with them about why they look forward to this NASCAR weekend. We get here early on uh, on Sunday, usually Saturday, Sunday, we do the whole Watkins Glen area experience, and then uh, Wednesday morning we come to the track, first yeah. thing in the morning. WGI's campground quickly filled up with campers from all across the country. And for some, they say they are experiencing WGI's track in even New York State for the first time ever. What was your first impression? Hills, because we're from Flatland. <laughs> yeah, a lot of hills. Yes, and you a lot of hills. And it's, it's just beautiful. There's so, so much uh, green and all here. It's unbelievable. John, who is from Winter Park, Florida, says he and his son Rob drove for 17 hours straight to Watkins Glen International. John says he has been watching NASCAR races at Watkins Glen on TV for several years now, and it's always been one of the number one places he would like to visit. And now at age 82, he can finally cross this experience off his bucket list. I'm a NASCAR fan, and... Uh... I don't know, I just, I've never seen a road track, so that kind of uh, was one of those things I wanted to do. I've been to the oval tracks, so 
Some of the campers I spoke with earlier say that they reserve the same parking spot for their RV and trailer every year, and so do their neighbors, who they now consider family. This here is more fun because we know everybody. People have been here 20, 25 years, and we have a good time, don't we? Reporting for Thunder at the Glen, I'm Ashley Cafaro. Live from the home of the Go Bowling at the Glen, you're watching the Williams Toyota of Elmira Thunder at the Glen. Live from Watkins Glen International, we now return to the Williams Toyota of Elmira Thunder at the Glen. Now, when it comes to NASCAR, most of the attention is on the drivers. But during the interim, remember, there's a whole team during those pit stops. We're going to get the cars in top shape. Guys, I spoke to several members of Austin Dillon's pit crew earlier today. They spoke to me specifically about the challenges they face working here at Watkins Glen. If somebody, you know, messes up out there, we got to be able to pick him up, you know, during the stop, after the stop, make sure his head's still in it. For every driver out on the track, those stops on pit road can sometimes be the difference between a win or a loss. And for five member pit crews at Watkins Glen, it's an even bigger challenge. Unlike a typical race, the track forces cars to come in from the left side, meaning for pit crews, everything is backwards. It's a challenge and we always love challenges on pit road. I for sure look forward to it. You got a chance to go back the other way and kind of even out your body on all that work that you put in on going one way the whole year. Leading up to the race, practice and preparation are key. Teams work to undo their muscle memory, as Watkins is one of only two tracks on the NASCAR circuit that pose such a challenge. I got to do a, this weird deal where I grab one tire, grab another one off the ground, and carry both out to the left side, hand his tire off to him, and then go to the front spot, hang that tire, and then come back around and grab both tires. And all ideally in just a matter of seconds. A good stop, the team says, will happen in under 12. And a series of good stops is what could earn them a spot in Winter's Circle come Sunday. When everything's going right, it takes the whole team to be doing the right stuff every time for that whole stop to go perfect. And Thunder of the Glen continues right after the break. Live from the home of the Go Bowling at the Glen, you're watching the Williams Toyota of Elmira Thunder at the Glen. Live from Watkins Glen International, we now return to the Williams Toyota of Elmira, Thunder at the Glen. Well, welcome back. It's one of the largest camping weekends of the year, and a lot of plenty goes into the experience for fans. That's right. When there is not track activity happening, no races going on, there is a ton for fans to take advantage of. Our very own Ali Debicki takes a look. For some, heading up to the track is all about the big race. But what about the time in between? It's so much fun. NASCAR weekend, especially here at Watkins Glen, this is a big camping track. So everyone always is out all weekend. We see the same customers all three days. It's very good. For NASCAR lovers of all ages, there's plenty to do at Watkins Glen International. From the iconic sights to the smells and the sounds, several booths filled with food, games, and souvenirs can occupy even the most wandering of eyes. Kobe. Ah! WGI also has an exclusive kid zone, perfect for little ones and parents alike. Interactive games will be open until 2 p.m. on Sunday, giving fans plenty of time to still catch the go bowling at the Glen race. And no fan experience is complete without picking up some merchandise. It's a big part of the whole experience for them to get um, merchandise that's tagged to the event, tagged to the region um, for their favorite driver. Fanatics supplies nine souvenir rigs, chock full of fan favorites. And with merch for over 40 different drivers, there is something for just about everyone. All right, we'll have more Thunder at the Glen right after the break. Live from the home of the Go Bowling at the Glen, you're watching the Williams Toyota of Elmira Thunder at the Glen. Live from Watkins Glen International, we now return to the Williams Toyota of Elmira Thunder at the Glen. You guys are on. 
Now, thousands of NASCAR fans will descend on Watkins Glen International over the course of the weekend, but it can really be a challenge for some to make your way around this property, which actually covers thousands of acres. WNY's Isabella Garcia explores what officials at the Glen are doing to make sure everybody has an equal chance to enjoy the track. Watkins Glen International covers a space of more than 2,000 acres, which requires quite a bit of walking for most NASCAR fans. For those with disabilities, however, officials are doing everything they can to give them the ultimate experience. For arrival, um, it really kind of starts there. Um, all of our free daytime lots, um, all you need is a state-issued hang tag, uh, handicap hang tag, and license plates, and you could park in the, the very front rows, uh, the closest to the track. From there, guests with disabilities can use a free golf cart shuttle service. Just simply ask a WGI staff member to call for one or flag a cart down. And then it's time to check out the track. In all of our reserve grandstands, uh, we do have uh, wheelchair accessible seating areas, um, and that's in a, every single one. So no matter where you want to see the action on the racetrack, um, we do have uh, that accessibility for them. One NASCAR fan who is eager to see all of the action is 18-year-old Ryan Berwick. What are some of the feelings that you have right now uh, with you know race weekend finally here? I've been winning since February. <laughs> And it's finally here. Yeah. Would you say you're excited, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Ryan has cerebral palsy, which affects his body movement and function. This year, Ryan is using a specialized scooter, partially provided by WGI. A couple years ago, um, the track came to us and and saw that Ryan's other chair um, was in a d little disrepair here or there, and, and they wanted to get him a new chair that would um, be great and kind of grow with him and just give him accessibility to everything. How does this help you to be able to enjoy the race? It's, it stands up so I can be higher. Giving Ryan the ultimate vantage point for all of the racing action. Reporting in Watkins Glen, I'm Isabel Garcia. And we got to take another quick break, but qualifying wrapping up here at the track. We'll have a quick check in for your Monster Energy Cup Series drivers when we come back. You're watching Thunder at the Glen. We'll be right back. Live from the home of the Go Bowling at the Glen, you're watching the Williams Toyota of Elmira Thunder at the Glen. Live from Watkins Glen International, we now return to the Williams Toyota of Elmira Thunder at the Glen. And Welcome back. Just a quick qualifying note here. Denny Hamlin has unofficially won the poll for Sunday's Go Bowling at the Glen race. Now, that is barring Sunday's inspection. That's right. As we mentioned at the top of the show, the cars need to get inspected. And what we saw last weekend at Pocono is that Kyle Busch had the pole but failed that inspection and actually had to go to the back of the pack. Luckily for him, he still won the race. But yes, he did have to start at the back of the pack. So that is unofficial results we have there. All right. Well, we want to check in on the race forecast one last time. So we're going to send it back down to Chief Meteorologist Joe Varis. Joe, where can we find you now? Hey, we're in Victory Lane here. Very appropriate for our last weather hit in Victory Lane because we have a winner of a forecast for you here as we wrap up the weekend. The gold bowling at the Glen tomorrow looks great weather-wise. I'll have some patchy fog to contend with first thing in the morning, but as we advance our future track here through your Sunday, uh, temperatures starting out in the 60s and 70s, but quickly rising uh, through the 70s, through the 80s. We actually going to top out in the lower 90s for high temperatures tomorrow. No precipitation nearby here in the Twin Tiers, Southern Finger Lakes. It'll be a dry day with high pressure and control, so a lot of uh, sunny skies on tap for the region for tomorrow. So your exclusive go bowling at the Glen forecast here as we go through your Sunday, looking very nice. Uh, mostly sunny skies. Need to stay hydrated. Wear that sunscreen if you're heading up to the track for tomorrow. Again, we're looking at uh, those hot temperatures. Uh, race time, uh, early to mid-afternoon, looking at readings topping out in the lower 90s. Feeling close Closer to 100, though, when you factor in the high humidity in place. Uh, so uh, good news here from the weather forecast and the things here in Victory Lane. We'll send it back to you guys. 
All right, thank you, Joe. And thank you to our viewers in the Twin Tiers in Erie, Pennsylvania, for joining us for Thunder at the Glen. Now, don't forget to tune in tomorrow to the Go Bowling at the Glen broadcast. It's going to be live beginning at 2.30 p.m. on NBC. Barring inspection, like we said, Danny Hamlin will be start starting at the pole. But from all of us at WENY, you guys have a great night.